Yeah, for me to discover that there was something um, about myself that was completely stable and reliable and dependable and that it was always accessible and was always the basis of my experience has changed everything for me. Um, so the Balanced View training is simply an education in the nature of mind. And the first point or the starting point is always for us to identify that for ourselves. And so if you just stop thinking for a moment, just stop describing everything that's going on. What remains when you stop describing? There's an alertness, there's a cognizance, there's something that is aware of everything that's going on. There's something that's aware of the next thought that just pops into your mind. And so just to stop describing for a moment gives us the opportunity to recognize and acknowledge that there is this open intelligence that is naturally present and is the basis of everything that we're experiencing. And within this open intelligence, there's this stream of experience or, or, or data we just call it a stream of data. So all of your thoughts, emotions and sensations just continually streaming in a, an un, unstoppable, unstoppable, unpredictable flow. And with this really simple instruction that for short moments we relax the need to describe everything and we allow that flow of data just to be exactly as it is. And in this simple instruction, in this simple choice we see that we have in each moment, of either continuing to describe everything and to focus in on all of the ever-changing descriptions or to relax and recognize open intelligence as naturally present appearing inseparable from the descriptions like the breeze is inseparable from the air which practically means that it's in the descriptions in your thoughts, emotions and sensations that we have the opportunity to recognize open intelligence that recognition changes everything. Because what I discover is that whilst all of my experience is always changing, so my thoughts are always changing, my feelings are changing, my sensations are changing, experience is always changing, the intelligence that is the basis and is the capacity to know that experience is always there. It's always reliable. It never goes anywhere. All that happens is that we've been trained so thoroughly to focus in on the descriptions, on our thoughts and what's going on and our opinions and what we like and what we don't like, that we've forgotten that this intelligence is always the basis. We get so lost in the descriptions about what's going on, we forget to notice what is most fundamental about our own experience. And in this simple recognition, the relationship with our experience changes completely. So it goes from needing to try and manage and control our experience to complete relaxed openness. And this complete relaxed openness sees everything clearly. It's no longer afraid of its own appearances, like, um, like a mirror really doesn't mind what is reflected in it. It really doesn't get upset whether it's something um, scary or um, something that makes us anxious or it's something beautiful. The mirror is completely impartial, always completely wide and open, allowing for all of the reflections equally. And this is the, exactly the same relationship that our mind has with all of our experience. Mind is always wide open and clear. All that happens is, is that we get caught up in the descriptions and we forget to enjoy that relaxed, open clarity. And to recognize that every single thought, emotion and sensation is like a reflection in this vast mirror gives us a perspective on all of those reflections that is impossible without recognizing that. So, for example, if I want to understand the way that other people behave and why they behave the way that they behave, the best way that I found to do that was to understand my own behavior. Um, and I love some of the insights that you, you shared in your questions. And so, for example, personally I was brought up in a background where um, 
I was taught to be honest. I was taught not to lie. Um, but I have occasionally lied. <laughs> Why did I do that? Why did I occasionally lie? And I love what you shared. And it was um, sometimes I would lie about something that I'd done to because I thought that that was what the other person wanted to hear. Sometimes um, I might lie, a little white lie about um, something that I've done or perhaps tell about it in a way that wasn't exactly the way that it happens to impress somebody, to make them like me. Or perhaps I told a lie because I thought if I told the truth I was going to get into trouble for something that I'd done that I thought the other person didn't want me to do. And so I can look at my own experience and I can see that even though I had this training in I should always be honest and I should never lie, sometimes I did lie. But the motivation was, um, was always actually trying to be of benefit. So I, it was either because I thought the lie was something somebody else wanted to hear or I thought that somehow I would benefit from telling the lie. And so that's an interesting insight because it allows me to understand why other people might tell lies. And what I've seen is that when I relax as open intelligence, I see everything clearly because I don't need to have and hold on to fixed reference points about how things have to be. Um, I actually met somebody who decided that they were never going to lie. And I mean never. No matter what the situation, they had decided that they were always, always going to tell the truth. And um, when I met this person, um, they had quite an interesting story. I think I'll just cut it short to say that they ended up um, in court <laughs> being found guilty of contempt because they had told the judge what they thought of him <laughs> and had ended up in a high security um, mental institute. Now, we can see that there are extreme positions to be taken. But what I see from when I rely on open intelligence, I allow the data to flow on by, I can see everything about the topic of lying and honesty. And I can see that actually, when I allow my intelligence to be completely open, as it is naturally, then there is a clarity and there is a capacity to see what will be of most benefit. Now, I really value honesty but at the same time, I have complete understanding as to why people aren't honest and why they might not always tell the truth. And I can see for myself that there is a skillfulness where I'm no longer afraid to think and feel everything around that topic, both with regards to my own behaviour and regards to the behaviour of other people. There is a compassion and an understanding and also a capacity to see that my skillfulness in relating is not based on having a fixed idea about I should never lie or I should always tell the truth. The skillfulness and the love and the compassion in relating comes from the recognition of open intelligence and it comes spontaneously. And it comes from this deep recognition of what it means to behave based on my data, i.e. data like I really want this person to like me or um, I must say this thing because I think this is what they really need to hear. Instead there is a vastness of intelligence that includes all of those behaviours but is actually completely unaffected by any of these thoughts and emotions that come and go, like the mirror is unaffected by any of its reflections that appear within it. And the capacity to be 
a dignified, loving, powerful human being, I discover is innate and is not dependent on any fixed idea about how I have to be or how I should be. I can include all those ideas, I can include this um, education in the respect for honesty, but at the same time there is um, an openness of responsiveness that cannot come from any fixed idea and then trying to fit my behaviour and my speech into that rigid fixed framework. The capacity to love, the capacity to be a capable, powerful, clear human being is actually who we already are. And so trying to fit that into any conceptual framework is immediately a, a limitation. Instead I can bring it back to this openness of perception that you identify when you stop thinking for a moment. There it is. So the simple practice is to return again and again to this openness of perception, to allow your intelligence to open up naturally. And I find that there is an honesty there that is automatically aligned with what will be of most benefit. And I see that the attempts I had previously to work out what would be of most benefit or contrive my behaviour based on my ideas about what other people wanted to hear or didn't want to hear or how I wanted other people to see me, all of those ideas just naturally relax and soften out as I allow them to flow on by. And I see that actually I'm a much more powerful, capable human being than any ideas I had about how I needed to be in any situation. So this is the intelligence that we're learning to tap into here. And it's interesting to um, apply that to, to all aspects of our life and understanding. So I can look at any... You, you can think right now of anybody, either alive or in history, that you really admire, that you really, really admire, um, that you think of as a fantastic role model. And maybe some of us are thinking of the same person, many, many may be thinking of somebody that no one else is thinking of, someone that you really admire. It's a public figure, somebody that's known um, publicly. And um, you may think only positive things about them. You know, they're just incredible, the things they've done, the example they are, the way they speak, you know, the way they are. You can be absolutely sure that somewhere online, perhaps in more than one place, there are blogs and websites dedicated for people to share how much they hate this person. Guaranteed. I don't, it doesn't matter who you are thinking of. It doesn't matter. And this is one of the beautiful things about the internet. <laughs> this is one of the incredible things that the internet is really opening up for us as humans. Because on the internet, all data is there for you to see. All data. Positive, negative and neutral. All of it just being vomited out for the first time in human history because previously all of these negative thoughts were hidden. We were told that they were so wrong that you cannot have them. You shouldn't have them and yet they were still there. So this stage in human evolution of having this capacity now first time in human history to put everything out there on display, it's all there is actually very, very powerful because it allows us to see ourselves as we really are, to see that we have to recognize everything about us, the positive, the negative and the neutral, as this same shine of mind. Because until we recognize that, we will continue to behave as if we are victims to particularly the negative thoughts, the critical thoughts the thoughts we have about not liking people. And then when we behave as if we're a victim to them, then we play them out in the way that we relate and the way that we speak and the way that we behave. And we can all see what the results of that are in the world. So for each one of us to open up and to see everything about ourselves from the vantage of open intelligence. So like the mirror naturally and effortlessly includes all its reflections within it 
we need to open up and effortlessly include all of our own data and clarify all of them as open intelligence so that we can have the wisdom to see what will be of most benefit. Because otherwise we will feel like our behaviour and our actions and our speech are controlled by particularly the negative thoughts and emotions and sensations that we have, the thoughts we have about other people. The positive ones, yes, they certainly have an influence. The neutral ones we kind of just ignore. But most commonly it's the negative thoughts we have about people, places and things that inform our behaviour and our actions and the way that we relate. And that's because we haven't recognised them as open intelligence. Once we recognise them as open intelligence, just for a short moment at a time, then we see that actually none of them can be found to have a nature separate or apart from open intelligence. Like no reflection in the mirror has a nature separate or apart from the mirror. And the key point is this instinctive recognition. So if we have um, anxiety about any topic, and money is a good one, who is sitting here relaxed and feeling quite relaxed? Didn't you hear what I just said? It was money. <laughs> money? Money! Oh, you're not so relaxed now, are you? But that's amazing. What, what's changed? What has changed? Do you have more or less money than you had five minutes ago? I don't know, maybe you've got an incredibly high interest account where you do have a little bit more. Maybe you have lost a load of money, but actually nothing has changed. But the habit of suddenly feeling something like anxiety around money, that one thought, one data stream just pops into our mind. Somebody says something really uh, unhelpful, like money. And then we're off, we're on, on our descriptions. Hold on, hold on, what am I doing? I'm sitting here, I'm not worrying about money. I need to think about it, I need to worry about it, I need to focus on it. But what happens when you relax and allow that to be naturally included within the vast openness of your intelligence? Does that thought, does that feeling, does that fear have a nature separate or apart from open intelligence? Can it be found to have a nature of its own? Look for yourself, see. Because otherwise, we are at the mercy. Oh. Oh. <laughs> of fleeting data that leave no trace like the flight path of a bird in the sky. <laughs> no datum leaves a trace in the pristine nature of mind. Not even the deepest fear that you have. But until you can face it as open intelligence and allow it to be as it is, just for one short moment, you will always feel like you're a victim to it. And your behaviour and your actions and the way that you treat yourself and treat other people will be reflected in your emphasis on that fear or that dislike or that negativity. And so what we offer here is a training to face everything as it is. To see that there's nothing that we need to be afraid of anymore that we have this courage, we have this openness, it's, it's inbuilt, it's innate. So all we need to do is just to get to know that. And, and that's all that's going on here.